Hi everyone, welcome back to Hair of the Werewolf. I'm Lily and I have Chase. Hello friends. <laughs> so we are a paranormal horror podcast and we kind of like doing a whole pub theme atmosphere, specifically us drinking and hopefully you guys can too if you can join. Join along. Yeah. Uh, and we like to tell each other scary stories. Me in particular, my goal is to always scare Chase. And his, I guess it's to scare me, but you have sometimes many stories at the end. I, I agree, but my stories have very specific focuses, uh, depending on the episode, but they're usually geared specifically at Lily. Yeah, so it kind of really channels into my fear, which sometimes they do get me, and other times they're just really funny. So it really depends. But yeah, I guess... And yours tends to be general horror. You're trying to scare me, but you kind of cover all I cover genre. everything else. I cover, um, you know, ghosts, cryptids... Uh, suicidal dogs suicidal dogs unfortunately <laughs> that one time <laughs> yeah let's not tell that story again that was enough yeah that was once was enough and i think i'm done hopefully unless i come across something else then i'm sorry but yeah that that's kind of where i am still haven't done a mummy story yet i'm waiting for that i love oh, mummies. i'm not scared of mummies i just love there's mummies. actually a story i have a curse if you will Perfect. things like that so curses are also on the list of things that Sweet. nothing is really beyond my boundaries Should cover the uh the King Tut or Tutankhamun curse when they that's one opened of up them. The, that's so fun. It's good There's stuff. a lot of good curses out there, so I'm just gonna only good take curse. my time. <laughs> All right. So, so before we go on, we should kind of talk about what's happened recently. Nothing major. Uh, we watched an old school horror film. Oh man! Uh, that came out when we were in high school in 2001, but neither of us saw it. No. So this was our first time watching it. It just popped up on the Tubi app. I don't know if you guys do Tubi. Like, we're sick of paying for a subscription, but this one's free. It just has ads. And so we just look for horror movies that pop up on it. And all of a sudden, <laughs> we see Bones. Well, first of all, we see Snoop Dogg. And we're like, what's this about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, but I remembered it coming out. I just never saw it. I yeah, barely so, remembered it, so honestly. So Snoop Dogg horror film. Um, it, it's official definition online is a black exploitation horror, and yeah. it makes sense because a lot of it takes place in what would have then been now 2001, but also flashbacks to the 70s mm -hmm. where they have very like Snoop Dogg's like a pimp or dressed like a pimp at least. <laughs> and so, first off, the movie's not very good, unfortunately. We love watching old movies, and so there was so much nostalgia in what they were trying to do, but it was still really bad. But essentially, yeah, it was a pimp who got killed, and... <laughs> I mean, spoiler, since 2001, if you haven't seen it, then I guess cl close your ears, but we're yeah. going to talk about it. And then they threw his body in this old creepy house, and in modern times, he comes back and starts... Like the son of his enemies try to tries to open a club, I mean classic, in the old house, and Bones is like... Not on my turf, and so he starts killing people. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm worried that our description actually makes it sound better than the movie was. If it actually, it might have, but it, that wasn't very hard to do. So if you if you're ready for some schlocky, I wouldn't even call it a slasher because the kills aren't even slashery. You can't really see them either, do we? Yeah, and I it was think. R. How how did they? What what made it R? I don't know. There's probably even, like a lot of cussing that I don't remember. That we don't pay attention to because yeah. we're adults and cussing doesn't offend us. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, if you're interested in seeing it, it's on the Tubi app. You can watch it on your computer or through your Fire Stick or whatever you got. It's pretty fun. Yeah. try Give it a shot. Either way, it's kind of a lull period for movies. Uh, always is kind of at the beginning of the year. Horror movies try to shoot for the fall times right around Halloween. Or like a summer blockbuster thing, exactly. but otherwise, yeah, basically but fall. there's a lot of exciting ones allegedly supposed to come out this year, including another Conjuring movie, another Halloween movie. Now, Conjuring, like, spin-off, or the war in the... The title's actually The Conjuring something or other. It's like The Conjuring oh, okay. scared us a lot or something. I know. Scared hopefully, us hopefully a lot. it's not called that because it's the worst <laughs> title ever. But yeah, so a new Conjuring and a new Halloween that's supposed to be a direct sequel of... It's called Halloween Kills, I think, and it's a direct scene mm. for the one that came out last year, the year before, where Jamie Lee Curtis actually came back. Yeah, it was yeah, pretty we decent. saw that. Yeah, it was pretty good. It wasn't amazing, but it was good. I mean, the only problem that I had with it, again, we didn't get to see any of the kills. A lot of it was, like, off screen, mm -hmm. from what I remember. Everyone's all tame now with slashers. Yeah, what's going on, people? It's all right. Uh, so, yeah. I what, did, what did we watch recently that had a lot of gore and we were really satisfied? Oh, yeah. We watched the original. <laughs> we No, we actually. That makes us sound so. Yeah, it makes us sound like we're demented. Crazy. Okay. But I mean, like, 
we're so used to a lot of modern movies now where blood is scary. Mm-hmm. Uh, we watched the original like 1981 or 82 Conan. Oh yeah, not not the that's se- not a horror movie. Yeah, not though. the sequel that was terrible, but like the original one. And man, is it bloody! In it's fact, it was so brutal. bloody, we were both kind of taken aback. Like, wow, that's well. It had been a while since we've seen anything that. Um, like blunt. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. But not a scary movie. Not even close to no, it. No, it's actually just really fun. Just action and adventure and and Arnold Schwarzenegger. So I guess if things. that's all, yeah, <laughs> being a brute. I mean, if you like that, let's just give it a shot. Perfect drinking movie. It really was. Yeah. All right. So I think it's time for you to start trying to scare me with your story. I will. Tell but me before tell I me do. About the story. Let me mention tonight I will be drinking rum. Ooh, yeah. Oh, I don't know why we didn't even talk about that earlier. Yeah. yeah tonight is a Sailor Jerry night. <laughs> yep. By uh, my choice. I never Lady's used choice. to drink rum. My rum intake went up like 10 million fold because <laughs> of Lily. I would I would happily just You're drink welcome. beer and gin for the rest of my life and be okay. But she's forced me into things like I'd, uh, wine put some spice and rum. into your life. Yeah. And rum was the way to do it, apparently. Yeah, and apparently putting liquor in horchata is a thing. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> yep. So. Damn, now I want horchata. Thanks, Chase. So anyway, um, yeah, we're drinking rum. So shall we get started? Yes, we shall. So I have a story today brought to you by Chrissy, yay. who is recommending. Yay. And she wanted me to talk about La Llorona. Don't you mean La 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 Rana? Sorry, La La Rona. Okay. You know when the movie came out, there were a million people across the U.S. who have no experience in Spanish, and they just looked at the title and they're like, "What?" Like two L's. Who are you trying to kid? Llama. Yeah, <laughs> La Llama. That's just call it that. Uh, no. So the funny thing about that is there is a YouTube video where they capture a lot of alleged videos in of La Llorona, and apparently, like the narrator guy did not know how to say her name so he really did say la la rona the whole time it was almost unbearable but the video clips was good enough it made me stay and like actually watch the whole thing <laughs> i want to watch it now just to hear him butcher it he's like this one was in mexico apparently they saw la la rona and i was like okay <laughs> dude you need to calm down with that uh so one of my favorite mispronunciations <laughs> is chipotle instead of chipotle <laughs> Um, I, I, I there are people close to me who have actually pronounced it that way, so I'm not trying to insult them or anything. But it always close always to. gives me a little giggle when I hear Chipotle. Yeah, this one, <laughs> I you know the Chipotle doesn't even bother me, but the Yorona does. But only because like let me tell you why, because it's not like the Y sound is exotic or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just unless he truly didn't know. But the fact that this video would have somehow probably made some sort of research, being like, let me look it up. I guess it, I just assumed it would have popped up, but maybe not. Poor dude. La La Rona. <laughs> La La Rona. <laughs> All right. So to start it off with, I wanted to talk about like kind of where it is more prevalent or like where the Yorona kind of is from. Specifically, if you grew up in Latin America or the Southwest region, that's exactly where you probably would have heard the story. Mm. Someone was going to tell you about it. There's really no way around it, especially when you were a kid. Well, and especially if you live near a river, and we do. Especially if you live nearby a river, yeah. A river going straight through the middle of our city. Yeah. Now, despite, like, my assumption that everyone knew about La Llorona, I seriously thought it was just as popular as, like, Bigfoot and Loch Ness because everyone knew about it, and I'm just like, everyone's going to know. But I actually learned recently from a friend of ours who had never heard of it until she moved to New Mexico. Hmm. And I'm like, whoa. That's pretty, that's interesting. But she also told me that she knew about the boo hag, whereas I hadn't. Mm. So you know what I'm saying? It seems like a regional thing as opposed to. Yeah, I guess so. To be fair, there are no blurry photos of Lionel. So. There's videos. Oh. I grew up here, so I I heard this ever since I was a kid. (laughs) You're going to hear it one more time. And probably not the last time either. Maybe you got some new stuff. Because, I mean, I never, like, focused on it. I just knew about it. Right. I, I agree. Um, yeah. So anyway, like, because of that reason, since she didn't know about it, I'm kind of excited again to tell it, this time in a more, like, general kind of format, because I think there's people, as we've established before, there's people outside of the country who hasn't even heard of it, probably, and who are listening. So here we go, people who are, like, in Russia, as I, (laughs) there was this one listener from Russia recently, so maybe you don't know. (laughs) Hi. (laughs) I hope you enjoy. I hope you enjoy this crazy story. 
Okay, so let's begin. And I'm also going to tell you the interpretation that I've always heard, and specifically from the Mexico region. Uh, There are so many different interpretations, even just from state to state in the United States, the Southwest region, and also all across not just Mexico, but South America. I'd say it's village to village. I mean, I mean, truly, truly. So here's one that I've always heard, and it seems to be not just ones that I've heard, but I also put in elements that seem to be very, very common from in between all stories, just with slight variations. Of course. Okay. So there was a beautiful woman who lived in a rural town in Mexico, in my story, where many men would attempt to win her heart over. So she was always just sought after. And unfortunately for the men, she never really reciprocated their attention. Then one day, a rich rancher came into town on business and noticed the beautiful woman. A lot of people say her name is Maria because that's just probably the most common name. Yeah, that's the John Smith. (laughs) The John Smith. So we're just going to go ahead and call her Maria. Uh, He noticed Maria and immediately wanted just to be with her. Like, he knew this was going to happen. So he bought her presents. He would sing songs to her. He would do everything he can to woo her. And then one day, it seemed like she actually began to fall in love with him as well. Now, they weren't together very long until she got pregnant. And the rancher decided, okay, I'm going to be with this woman. I'm going to buy her a house in this village that I met her in where she lives. And she's going to take care of my children. They end up having two. Some people say it's two boys. Some people say it's one girl, one boy. Now, because I had mentioned before that he was from out of town, he still had to go out of town plenty of times to do business. Sure. And he would travel and he would be gone even sometimes like a month long. Oh, the olden days. Oh, the olden days. Anyway, every time he visited, it seemed like he was losing interest in her, but he was still giving very much love and affection to his children. So she began to get very sad and feeling neglected and just starting to really resent him and even her children, slowly but surely. And then one day, he came back with another woman and said- Why why do you think he figured he was losing interest in her? I mean, for real. And he said, they are getting married, she is of my class, and that we are no longer going to be together, and I'm not going to be supporting you, but I will be taking my kids with me. So as she, like, heard the news, she's obviously, like, blind with rage, he goes off to finish his business in town with his new lady, and while that's happening, Maria is like, you're not taking my kids, you're not taking anything of mine, I'm just going... Like, if you can't have them... No one can. No one can. Or if she can't have them. Oh, right, right, right. If she can't have them, no one can. So she takes the kids to the river. Such a rational thought. And she always warned them to not go there or swim, you know, without supervision. But she let them, and she kind of let them drown. So, obviously, knowing that the waters were... The current was particularly fast that day, and everything, despite everything, she just was like, if they die, they die. Some people think that she literally held their heads down in the yeah, underwater. Yeah, the stories I always heard is that she drowned It was on very, very violent. Some people even, even some interpretations when I saw online said that they she killed them with a knife at the house and then dragged their bodies into the river. So it just really depends on which one you like. <laughs> yeah, like, like is the word <laughs> the, I would Whichever use here. version of child killing you like, that's <laughs> the one you can go with. But the one that I've always heard is that she just let them wander into the river knowing very well it was dangerous and they died so again different versions on how this leads into but the story i'm going to tell you today is that she immediately starts regretting this decision obviously so she goes running down the riverbank screaming and yelling for someone to help until eventually she can't see the bodies of her children and they just drift into the river and she goes back into town She tells people what happened, saying, oh, they just drowned in the river. And so she just starts withering away. She just stops eating. She gets very depressed. And every night she goes out and just cries her eyes out, trying to search for her children. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, because she is not eating and she's just so depressed, she starts becoming very skinny and Mm skeleton-like. So people start getting really concern and a little bit afraid of her as well because she's a little nutty at this point yeah i have a feeling her diet plan would never show up on the front of like cosmo magazine i mean kill your children lose 10 pounds <laughs> shed 30 pounds in one week find out how oh god 
let's hope not. That's that's never a thing. But uh, yeah, so eventually she actually just dies searching for her children. Hmm. Now, a lot of people think, oh, that's where the story ends. It is not. From that moment on, people immediately started hearing her cries still, knowing that she was dead. So people were getting really weirded out by this, like, what's going on? And they'd always hear it at night, and it was very loud, and it just instilled incredible fear into people. And she always said the same thing. Oh, my children. Where are my children? That's creepy. Yes. And so she has been seen and heard, not just throughout Mexico or New Mexico, Arizona, Texas. There have been people who have said it, like, even way further south, like, south america and i think there was even a story in montana i'm like hmm, okay maybe she does travel quite far but anyway so another thing that people have said the reason why she's still on earth and kind of condemned to our world is because she was not allowed to rest in peace and go into the afterlife because she couldn't go without her children so she, that's why she's constantly looking for her Could, children. Couldn't it be that she was punished? <laughs> well, that's kind of the punishment. It's like a, oh, you can't come back and let, without the souls of your children. And so she's always trying to look for them. But it's kind of like, you know damn well they're probably in heaven. Well, they'd have to be. How I screwed mean, you is know that? I mean? <laughs> it's, like, it's like, sorry, Johnny. Uh, I'm not going to let you into heaven because your mom killed you. She's a bad person. We got to punish her, which... <laughs> Unfortunately means you're kind of caught up in this, yeah. but, you know. You're kind of caught up in this mess, sorry. <laughs> it's like the small writing. Right, know? yeah, it's like the small print. But, like, I think also with that going hand in hand, the reason why people are so afraid of her is because she will drown other children. Mm. So she is in such desperate... Like maybe she could use them to get right. in. Right, so she wants to use their souls to try to get in because she can't find her own. And so that's the, mm. that's where it kind of gets a little creepy. Now oh, that's where it starts. That's creepy. where it gets really, really creepy. That's where it starts affecting me. Hearing, <laughs> hearing uh, the ghost of a woman walking up and down the riverbank should be creepy. But you're like, only when she tries to kill people's kids. Yeah. that's where you draw I the mean, line. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Keep your family drama to yourself, lady. <laughs> but yeah, so that. Can anyone ever just wonder if it was a like a coyote? Because I mean, coyotes do have a distinct thing, but sometimes coyotes sound really weird, and sometimes they do sound like a whimpering person. They do, and that is actually one of the theories and behind of what was really going on. See how smart I am. But we'll get into that in a second. So obviously, this is used as a lesson to not go by the rivers. That's what a lot of people think where the story comes from. But a lot of people really do think it's real, like truly, truly believe it's real. Because not only do they, you know, have heard it since they were kids. But they have heard it themselves. There's a lot of encounters out there of La Llorona. But also, there are videos online. You should go check them out. Some of them are pretty creepy. Where I'm like looking at them and I was like, dang, that does look kind of weird. Or she's like levitating. Now, I know. Yeah, I was like, she's got to be doing something weird for me to believe it. Because I do believe there are crazy ladies walking up and down <laughs> rivers. Guys, too. I'm now, just saying. I'm just saying. I it's got to be see, ghostly for me to I freak out. I rarely see like crazy people in like long white gowns which is exactly how la llorona usually appears oh see you gotta tell me more about that i didn't know that i always yes. thought she was gonna look just kind of like a disheveled Regular homeless lady, lady. <laughs> she wasn't homeless when she was alive either well but i would assume you said that she, she stopped eating i figured at the end she went to crap so another of the reasons and i had to like figure out why is she always in white well apparently when she was younger or like before she had kids and everything like that her one of her favorite attires was to wear a long flowy dress into town and she just like looked absolutely beautiful and so when she felt like she was getting neglected she started wearing just like that white dress again and kind of like i said she was going crazy and so she like at some point so i'm starting to get vibes so you're talking about how she like always showed up wearing this dress she sounds like she might have been a bit of an attention lover that's she exactly been, what's happening she might have been a brat like at first, you just feel really bad because this guy screwed over, and she did, like he did, and that's terrible, and I, I fully embrace how horrible that guy was. But I'm starting to get more of the story and realizing she may, maybe she wasn't the greatest or most mentally healthy person beforehand. I mean, truly Why? not. Always wanting to look great, and the minute she doesn't have any attention, she's like, I gotta get it back. Like, that sounds like she's got some stuff that she needs. I mean, this woman killed her children. I 
There's no there's no real redemption. Well, I know, but you could you could argue that it was in the moment of madness. Uh, yeah, that's what a lot of people say. Like she had like a true psychotic break. Yeah, and so I'm not saying it was okay or even remotely. Yeah. Remotely forgivable, but at least there's a specific moment mm-hmm. that precipitated it. Whereas everything else just seems to be like, well, that's just who she was. Right. So I mean, whereas I think other people would handle a break badly, it appears that she was a person with problems. And that's why the break was so bad. Right, exactly. Okay. So she had a fancy dress that she used to wear all the time, and she wanted to look like a hot ghost. She wanted to look like a really hot ghost. <laughs> and so that's why when you see her, you got to say, damn, and then maybe she'll leave you alone. See, why Why isn't there a TV show called Sexy Ghost Hunters? <laughs> Who's sexy, the ghosts or the hunters? Oh, if, if I made the show, both. <laughs> it's like... I want to say it's the worst idea, but I don't yeah. think so. All the guys are ripped and oiled, and all the women are wearing like lingerie, and they're hunting for ghosts. Lingerie, while they, yeah, while well, they're hunting for uh, ghosts, and, like night, they're freezing because they always do this stuff in the winter. Because I don't course. think you can hunt ghosts in the summer, according to these shows. So yeah, it would be it would be the there's plenty. It would be the trashiest, most worthless show ever, and I guarantee everyone, including me, would watch. Actually, it. that just reminds me of Girly Ghost Hunters. Oh yeah, that show was pretty terrible. But it was so funny. Well, they they all acted like they were seventeen. Like, I think they probably were around. But, like, they were watching, probably like twenty or something. I mean, they seemed very impressionable and also very accepting of everything. They're kind of like the people that if something fell off the wall, they for sure for the rest of their life are going to tell people how they had a ghost encounter. Like they were possessed, and you're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that picture. I've always felt weird about that one picture that fell. <laughs> I think it was the ghost of an uncle. You know, it's funny. Actually, I, I really did like the show because it was super different since they were so scared the whole yeah, time. they were. Whereas, like, most ghost hunters that you see them on the show and they seem very professional and they're, like, pretty in tune with, like, the technology they're using and they know what they're doing and they have, like, a routine or, like, you know, specific ideas of how the night is going to go. Sure. Whereas when you were watching girly ghost hunt- hunters, you just, you had no idea where you would end up in the house because they just ran away. <laughs> and you're like, now they're in the backyard. Well, I don't- you weren't watching because you thought they were going to encounter a ghost. You're watching because you wanted to see them freak the flip out. Yeah. And it was pretty funny. I mean, I'm not saying it's far off from how like I'd probably react, but I do like watching other people get scared. <laughs> <laughs> So no judgment, but it's funny. Who doesn't? That's that's one of the reasons I love watching horror films in a theater. Yeah. Even even the terrible ones with jump scares that aren't that good, like watching um like like any of the movies that have come out in the last five years with like low ratings, I can imagine watching them in the theater would have been just wonderful because you're gonna hear the people around you like screaming mm-hmm. and it's just it just adds to it. It's great. Yeah, I like it. Uh, it's just really funny. But okay, yeah, sexy ghost hunters can also be funny too, I'm sure. So tell me about sexy Lyorona. Okay, sexy Lyorona. So sometimes she's actually not sexy white, but sexy in black. Oh, she's feeling sultry. Yeah, so actually it's not really sexy. It's like this really long Victorian looking dress. We saw, we saw 10 Things I Hate About You. If it's black, it means she wants to have sex. Oh my God. <laughs> to all her underwear? <laughs> right. It was like the stupidest part. Yeah, it was the dumbest part of the movie. You're uh, like, you're like this This logic makes no sense like, like at all. It. Well, how old was I when that came out? I was probably like 13. I'm like, huh. Everyone has black under. Even guys have black I think, boxers. I think everyone just has something. I, I don't know. Maybe not. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah. So, sometimes she's wearing black. And she's wearing a black veil as well. Which, actually, if you really ever look at the Day of the Dead kind of iconography, oh, yeah. you see um, the La Malinche. I don't know if you've ever heard that term before. It sounds kind of familiar, but I can't put it to something. Well, I mean, I can talk about that here in a second. But that is her look. And so a lot of people say, oh, like, that's who she was. That's where it comes from. So another origin story of La Llorona is La Malinche, which uh, her name was Doña Marina. And she was a slave and slash translator for Cortez, the Spanish conquistador. Mm -hmm. La Malinche is symbolic and known to bear the child that would be among the first mestizos, which is a mix of indigenous American and European. So Mexican. Well, Mexican. Right. So that's kind of like, she's kind of like the mother. She was just kind of, de- I mean, she wasn't the first or anything, but she, the first wave, yeah, I should she's say. she's fallen into that right. legend of it being as such. Exactly. So she was obviously a slave, like sex slave as well. So she had kids with Cortez and obviously all the women at that time. And so anyway... 
So some people say that because of this, since obviously, you know, she was forced to have children with this person and everything, that she may have killed him for that reason as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so that's just one of the stories. But also that is a Mexico-derived theory. And yeah. these are the ones that I've always heard. La Malinche is just like a very Mexican theory assumption that it could be from that. But that's not like what a, people a believe. modern. I guess you. Mean, I guess what I'm going to say. It's a derived story, kind of like how modern Santa Claus comes from previous stuff. That it's right. So if you believe, it suggests that right. there was an origin to the La Llorona story, as opposed to La Llorona just being an actual event to some degree that inspired it. That this might actually have never happened and is just a modern interpretation of an old story. Exactly. And so this one. And so that kind of like goes into the next series. So La Llorona also become from the Ten Omens foretelling of the conquest of Mexico mm. that is linked to the Aztec goddesses. Uh, gosh, I'm trying to figure out how to pronounce some of these things. But anyway, the Florentine Codex, an encyclopedic work on the Nahua people of Mexico. There's like all this information about it of the 16th century where um, they find at least two Aztec goddesses that could be linked to La Llorona. And one of them that I was like, oh, wow, this one sounds kind of legit, is, oh my gosh, I don't know how to say these kind of terms, but uh, it's either Kyokotl or Suyakotl. So it, it describes as a savage beast and an evil omen who appeared in white and who would walk at night weeping and wailing. She was crying for the fate of her children mm. versus her literal children. Got you. Got yeah. You. So these stories, they were told like the, these omens you're talking about, these existed before the Spaniards even landed. Well, this would have predicted it. Well, yeah, but I mean, yeah. d- is of it known to have existed beforehand or is this kind of like well, these- retroactively they say... Like, there was a prediction, but it was probably written after. Like, it what could have been, about? you know, it's kind of like an, uh, like I said, like an encyclopedia of events and also like predictions and how they're interpreting mm-hmm. those predictions okay. into modern events. But it does sound like this is slightly still so, removed from La Llorona because right. I think you could go into every culture and find a story about a woman mourning dead children. Exactly. That's got to exist everywhere. Exactly. And I think that's just kind of their attempt to say, well, is this just something holding on to an older story that just constantly gets reinterpreted in a way? Is there anything about that story where she mourns for her children and she's going to wander the rivers to bring them back? But she does walk into the night uh, weeping and wailing. Oh, okay. So this would explain at least the cries at night. And I don't know if I ever said this before. I probably didn't, but La Llorona literally translates to the we- the weeping woman or mm. the crying lady whatever so in, 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 the, <laughs> in the version that you read did she ha- oh apart from maria did, did she have a last name maria maria no <laughs> maria, i don't maria. know no, she didn't I, as far as i know no um so yeah so like like i said it's all regional and these are just one origin kind of story where a lot of people might think it comes comes from but we're totally. not we're not really strong holding on to that. It's just kind of like grasping at this point and interpretations of like how people tell stories over time and all that stuff. Anyway, so there is quite a few personal experiences and there's a few stories that I got, I got from people. Now there is one. Yeah. So you know how you had mentioned before unsolved the, oh gosh, I keep forgetting unsolved parent supernatural. I think it's called. There's a couple unsolved. Yeah. Yeah. There's, um, Unsolved Supernatural is the one that I like because it's about yeah, horror stuff. Exactly. So there was a video I saw. It popped up on YouTube, obviously, just like as I was looking for things. Sure. And, you know, both, I think they the two guys that are the hosts of the show, they go into like Southern California into an area that is supposedly witnesses have said to see La Llorona, but they also go to New Mexico. Yay. Uh, specifically Las Cruces. I need to watch. Aw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why the aw? I was like, there's so well, many... Well, it's not Albuquerque if that's to do that. I was like, there's so many really cool places to go, like, along the river that just... I w- I'd even be sad if it was Albuquerque, too. Like, being in the city just seems weird Right, yeah. Like, I, it's not. It's nothing against Los Cruces. Please don't take it that way. I meant, it's mostly just like, why is it in a city? It should be, like, in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. small towns. I'm well, I think cool they went in the outskirts. It, I mean, maybe not. But, like, anyway, my point is, is that they do go to New Mexico because Las Cruces actually has a pretty high... Uh, accounts or or 
a high number of reported sightings. A high number of sightings. Yeah, exactly. It's not just it's not just her. It's UFOs and a lot of things. So well, like, so maybe Lyrona is an alien. Maybe <laughs> she is the really hot alien. They're looking for their dead alien babies. Ew! Why are you scaring me? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah like that's just one of the places that they go and I thought it was really cool so I had to watch the whole video anyway so obviously they told pretty much the story the way I told it today but they actually interview a girl who's from Las Cruces and tells her story so I'm gonna retell it myself so her and her cousin were walking along the river one afternoon from a distance she noticed a woman crying and appeared to be alone as well As they got closer, they realized that she was levitating above the ground and her wails became louder and louder. Mm -hmm. So without hesitation, when she turned around, she liked, she said her cousin was gone. (laughs) She was like, "Uh uh-oh. And so she starts running. Where are you at, cuz? I know, like, geez, you didn't even warn me. But anyway, like, I guess the cousin was already on it. Like, she she totally left. And so she started (laughs) running as well. And she saw, like, a house kind of in the distance. And so ran towards it and was like banging on the door loudly hoping that someone can answer and open the door because she as she was running and she was banging on the door she could hear the yorona right behind her just crying just crying just crying (laughs) really loudly don't mind me just crying right behind you (laughs) just chasing children and luckily for her someone did answer the door and she went inside and started crying and like telling her exactly what happened and You know, they kept her in there and then, like, eventually walked her home, I guess. But, yeah, that was, like, her experience. And I thought that was pretty cool. And that seems to be quite the way it goes with a lot of people when they describe their encounters. They just run? Well, they tend to run. That's usually a good uh, reaction. But, yeah, so they tend to see her levitating, sometimes on the side of the river, sometimes above the river water which I think would be even creepier because you're like, okay, this is legit a ghost and not just some crazy woman Hmm. in a dress. Now, there are a few other videos, like I had mentioned before, online that capture her and you can actually see her. Do they look real or are they super fake? Some of them look pretty fake. Like... (laughs) I'm not going to lie. Those are the ones I want to see the most. There was one where I was like, that is seriously just a lady. But it wasn't even by a river, which I thought was really funny. It was just some guy. It's like in a cave. Yeah. <laughs> he's in Germany. No, like he. So this guy was filming and he's like obviously just on a balcony, probably a few stories up. And he's trying to zoom in on this girl who's in a white dress. And she's just like in this empty lot walking back and forth. But you don't really hear her either. So hmm. I'm like, okay. That would probably be a crazy person on the streets. Yeah, it could be some chick who's tripping on... She's like, I'm just going to put on my best white dress, take some acid, and go. Or maybe, like, she's supposed to get married, and then the last minute, the groom, like, pulled out of the wedding, and so she got, like, super hammered. She's, like, stranded. And she's just (laughs) wandering through the parking lot, not knowing what to do. I guess that's what I would do. I'm like, I'm already in a white dress. I might as well scare some kids. (laughs) (laughs) Scare some kids and get drunk. (laughs) I'm going to get really drunk. And start screaming. Let's go. <laughs> Bring me to Las Cruces. <laughs> I got a mission. Oh my gosh. That would be that would be fun. So what are the theories? Uh, not so much theories, just more encounters I'm going to be talking about. Mm. Um, so yeah, like the... There was actually one... I thought this one was really cool. This happened in Texas in the San Bernard River where people have encountered La Llorona, but not but when they were walking, rather when they were driving. Now, if you find yourself alone and driving close by the river la llorona has been known to appear in the passenger seat of oh nice car. oh that's really nice and she will start screaming and crying for her children <laughs> this part made me laugh she would only disappear when you start driving further away from the river <laughs> so you're just like standing there with this crazy la- ghost. don't stop here it's la llorona country <laughs> i just like there's going to be two people crying in that car <laughs> until I get far from the river. <laughs> just hit the gas. <laughs> We're just both screaming. Yeah, it, it that one was terrifying. I'm you like, put, I don't know what to do. Like a La Llorona crossing sign on the road. You're just like, when you pass this sign, beware of her showing up in your car. It's like La Llorona ends in a mile. You're like, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was funny. But I guess like another thing too is that people say that she doesn't really come out like just end any night sometimes uh in a time that in particular she would manifest 
is when the river is really full Mm -hmm. because I guess she's more able to get the energy of the water flowing from the river for her to be able to be physical. So do you know what I mean? Like, you know how like a lot of ghosts, they kind of, they can only manifest if there's high amounts of electricity of course. or sometimes they draw energy from people themselves well water also can create a lot of energy and so that is kind of one of the times where if you know after a time that it's rain or the river is particularly full or high that's kind of more or less when you might expect gotcha. your your chances of seeing her are a lot higher now for the explanations of what it could be versus just some like old lady walking down the river some people say it's just pranks like, people are just legit in white clothing going up and down the riverbanks. And let's be honest, people have been playing pranks for centuries. Yeah, exactly. This isn't a new thing. Just because people can put it on YouTube doesn't mean pranks are a new thing. Exactly. So I believe people are pulling pranks hundreds of years ago. Yeah. So. I mean, I'm pretty sure back then if I grew up without Sega, I would be just a kid who pranked all the time. I mean, for real. Other people say it's just wind. When you hear the the wailings of the woman, it's just the wind carrying sounds. And I really think we should pay attention to that. And like I said earlier with the coyotes is, you know, when we've been outside, sometimes wind does sound weird. And sometimes animals, like a coyote has a sound, but it doesn't always sound that way. I mean, sometimes when I wake up in the morning and haven't cleared my throat, I totally sound like a different person. So <laughs> I, think, I think there should be some credit that if you don't see anything and you're just hearing something, I'm going to say chances are. It's the wind. Or yeah, an and this is, and these are things that, like, if you're not seeing anything, because a lot exactly. of people said, I, I've heard her. Yeah. You know, versus seeing. And then, of course, like you mentioned, animals. Specifically, the red fox sounds like a screaming woman. Their mating call, which is really funny that their mating call sounds like a woman getting murdered. I'm like, that is disturbing. And I actually looked at some videos. Uh, to listen to what that sounded like, it's actually terrifying. Like, if I was alone camping and I heard that, I'd be like, wow, I'm out of here. Someone is getting murdered, and it ain't going to be me. And that's their mating call. Right? That's their mating call. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, like... I don't think that's that weird because cats, when they're actually mating, not just having calls, that's a horrifying sound. That's a sound. horrible sound. First time I ever heard that was in college, and it, I, it honestly sounded like a creature was being ripped apart Mm -hmm. to shreds Mm -hmm. like outside my window and I was like what the hell the first time I heard it was in high school and I remember getting up and I like freaked out and I woke up my mom and I was like mom there's someone out there like making weird noises and she goes out there and she's like they're just cats I'm like okay (laughs) cats being all gross and cat sexy she didn't tell me they were doing it (laughs) <laughs> well, yeah, what parents my mom want, can't didn't want wait to, to talk to their kids about, yeah, that's just animals boning. Yeah, I think she was just more like, uh, those are just how cats sound when they're fighting. I'm like, fighting, sure. Just like when you and dad wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> uh, but, and then other animals, like, not just cats, cats, but, you know, mountain lions, things like that. Even the bigger cats sound crazy, and they can screech like a woman. And goats. I mean, depending on if you're on a farmland by a river and you hear some goats, cows, things like that, they can also sound very strange sometimes. Mm. And birds. You never know. Some crazy birds howling out there. Like owls, I guess. Owls do sound a little bit weird. Yeah. But they don't sound much like people. Nah. But a lot of birds sound different in all these different ways. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that w- those would have been less good examples back in like, like the 1600s. Because a lot of these people were living, you know, in small villages and whatnot. So they would be way more familiar with the way animals sound. Nowadays, those are better explanations because the vast majority of people aren't spending much time outside. So when they're outside, a lot of animal noises they're not going to be as familiar with and be like, oh, yeah, that's just totally blah, 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 blah. And that's exactly what my reasoning was. Because I think when this first story manifested, you know, assuming like let's just pretend this whole story is real, I think people would have at the time even still been pretty in tune with the wildlife and nature sounds. So I don't know. I don't know. I mean, those are just maybe some explanations today to debunk some of the people's like, I heard, I heard what sounded like a woman screaming and it was just like two cats getting it on. But when they're seeing things, it gets a little bit different. And that's what I'm saying, because when I try to look for skeptic explanations of what what do you do when you see something levitating they're like well i don't know maybe you they're thinking oh you're just like hallucinating or something like that i'm like okay cool thanks but that's not really I mean, plenty of times i'm sure some people would freak out when they just saw like a girl maybe one playing a prank or not walking up a river late at night and they might freak out 
Um, and when they're trying to tell the story later, people are like, it could have just been a girl. It's like, no, they were levitating just to, you know, just so people believe really them. Have- <laughs> However, if I am ever down the river and I see a levitating chick, I'll believe that shit like in an instant. Yeah. So and I, like, Fuck, it's I'm real. pretty sure you would just run and then I would turn around and you're like, I'm not your cousin. Gone. <laughs> yeah. You just. Maybe I'll just tap you on the shoulder and be like, I'm running now. No, my probably... plan would be to hold you like a human shield. <laughs> Good. You're you're younger than me by six months, so technically, if one of us has to be the kid, it would have to be. I guess I would have to go. Yeah, you're the younger one. Then, then that gives me enough time while she's like devouring your soul for me to run. You know, some interpretations say that she only targets men. So really, you would just be my shield. Sweet. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> I think it's amazing that you think Lyrona could handle this. I mean, very few could. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. She'll try and fail. So, yeah, that is uh, the story, essentially. It's kind of a short one, but it's a classic. At least for me, it's a classic. And whoever, this is the first time you've heard it, you should go online. There's plenty of videos to kind of let you know what that experience might be like if you ever encounter well, La Llorona. Great, well, it's a great story for kids because she's looking for kids. Yeah, but again, some interpretations say that she's looking for men. She's looking for revenge. Well, see, that that just, that (laughs) makes me a victim. And I don't like that version. (laughs) I like the version where she's going after kids. Because then you can tell it to kids. Like, you're like, no. And you know they'll always be home for supper. Yeah, so like if you're renting a cabin uh, by the river and you don't want to worry about your kids and you want to go out skinny dipping with your wife, you can tell the kids, one was going to kill you. (laughs) And so they'll just stay in their rooms and everything. And then you can just, you know, be left alone for a while. Sounds, Sounds like a good time. Kids, get out of the pool, La Llorona. <laughs> La Llorona's on her way. <laughs> Maybe. She especially goes after people who pee in the pool. Yeah. Yeah, she hates that. All right. So, La Llorona, I got some, something super local. Super local. Yeah. And it, for once, I'll, I was the one who was telling it, and not me being a child and adults telling me this story, scaring the hell out of me. So, my mom didn't tell me. My mom never told me scary stories when I was a kid because... Um, Apparently, she didn't believe in telling kids scary stories, which I I think is probably a good thing. I don't know. I have no idea. Who knows? But uh, I I heard about it when I was probably like in middle school. Um, We did a lot of folklore stuff when I was in middle school. We we covered a lot of really cool Native American folklore. We covered a lot of Mexican folklore. We covered a lot of a lot of that stuff, and it was it was good times. So yeah, I don't think my mom never ever told me the story, but I would say. I just, I always had older cousins, too, who mm-hmm. were, like, teenagers, and then aunts, too, would talk about it. Um, we all had siblings we whose all had jobs in life family, were just scared of the young Yeah, ones. who were just like, hey, have you heard of the headless? And you're like, what? You know, whatever. <laughs> headless. <laughs> Wait, what's insert. missing a head? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the woman who likes to drown you. I'm like, what? <laughs> and especially for me, who, like, obviously, even today, like, I don't really know how to swim. And so that just, that one really stuck to me when I was a kid. I'm like, she is going to try to brown me and it's going to be super easy. Yeah, it'll succeed. Like, <laughs> All she has to do business. is like, push me into the river and she's done. Which yeah. might have been what she actually did. Yeah. You know, we, she, she doesn't have to stab you. We've established that. Yeah, you don't really have to stab me. I mean, she might have had kids who are really bad swimmers and she's just like, I mean, go swimming. It's, it happens. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you have kids who don't swim. Uh, All right, well, I think it's time for another round of drinks. I agree. So I think we need to go get another round. We recommend all you guys uh, go get some more beer or wine or water or or tea or whatever you drink. Some people are listening to this at like 6 a.m. from what I understand on their way to work. Driving on their way to work. (laughs) (laughs) Sean. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So anyway, enjoy your coffee that doesn't have booze in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we'll be back in a few. See you in a bit. While we're getting another round, I think it's a good time to tell you about this week's episode sponsor, Woody's Hoodies 505, which is a brand new independent clothing company right here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Founder George Woods has created designs that celebrate the most iconic landmarks and cultural icons of life in the 505, such as the historic chemo theater, the tramway bridges, lowriders, and even the giant red arrow on Carlisle. In addition to t-shirts and hoodies, he's recently started offering hats as well, and they look great. But most importantly, he has a special limited design up specifically for Valentine's, which is right around the corner, as if you guys didn't know. So be sure to check out his website, woodyshoodies505.com. That's W-O-O-D-Y-S-H-O-O-D-I-E-S 505.com. And you can follow him on Instagram, which is at woodyshoodies505. 
Hi guys, welcome back. We are refreshed as always with new drinks and I think Chase might have something for us tonight. Yeah, and if you're a regular listener, you know what time it is. And if you're not, welcome to end of episode Encounter, 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 Encounter. So this story is a bit different from the others (laughs) because instead of doing a bunch of research and learning about something new, this one's actually a personal story. Okay. (laughs) What? This one was a uh, this was a suggestion as well because oh okay this suggestion comes from Lisa. <gasps> so, what? She didn't tell me. Now you know this kidding. story because you were you weren't there, but you heard oh. about it that night. You heard about it that night, but our I think list, I know. But most of our listeners do not. Uh, sure. Okay. This happened eight and a half years ago, mm-hmm. right here in Albuquerque. Sure did. All right, so let's take ourselves back, all the way back, to September 22nd, 2012. My friend George and I were attending Septemberfest, which used to be one of the best beer festivals in the state. Uh, it's where all these breweries bring uh, bring their beer to this one central location and it's like a festival you pay to get in you can drink all kinds of beer uh in later years <laughs> they made strong changes to the way september fest kind of functioned uh and the way it cost it's very it's a very different event now but at the time you essentially paid like 20 bucks and they gave you an amazing souvenir pint glass which we actually still drink out of ours we to this day it. from because it happened every year we sell yeah. plenty of them uh, they also gave you a token so you could fill up that pint for free to drink. But then you had like infinite And you amount. had unlimited right. samples where you could bring that pint glass to all the booths and they would pour you samples of all their beers as much now, as you wanted. Now, some booths poured like half pints, which was pretty sweet. Especially towards the end of the festival <laughs> when they just the didn't want to haul the beer back. Right. Um, so it was great. It was, it was really good times. It doesn't work that way anymore, unfortunately, but holy cow, I, I miss those days. There was amazing food being sold. There was live bands being played. So many people just getting drunk and having a good time. I never saw a fight, never saw anything crazy. It was just, what a time. So all I'm gathering here is prepare yourself because whatever happened next, you were quite... Drunk? <laughs> I wasn't going to say the answer but... is yes, yes, I was drunk. <laughs> Now, me and Lily have gone to plenty of these events together, but she wasn't with me at this event. No, I had to work. She was definitely working that day. So, because if if she wasn't working, and she she would have either been there, or I would have been able to call her, and I didn't call her. Mm -hmm. So, a few hours into the event, many hours of the event, George and I are unquestionably sloshed. And I see, you know, we're, we're taking a break from drinking, and we're sitting at the tables, and I see a bunch of people looking up and pointing to the sky so as hard as it was to not look at my beer anymore i look up to see something <laughs> dun, dun, dun. when i looked up what i saw was definitely a first for me i was expecting maybe they were pointing at like a jet trail or a really cool looking cloud or even like weird birds or something like something obvious that they'd be pointing at no what i saw was what appeared to be a stationary silverish ball floating in the sky Mm. and it was shiny because you could see the sunlight you know reflecting off of it and it was reflecting something fierce like staring at almost kind of hurt your eyes and i just stared at it and it didn't look like it was moving it was it felt like it was stationary it was moving it was moving so slowly i couldn't really tell plus i was drunk um (laughs) but it was there and no smoke trails no nothing it was just there and I was I thought to myself what the hell is that now before people start saying oh you just saw like Venus or whatever no this thing was huge I I know what Venus looks like in the sky I love astronomy and everything yeah. like this this thing was way way bigger the and only thing bigger way closer. You're gonna, yeah the only <laughs> bigger thing you're gonna see in the sky that isn't man-made obviously is the moon which is significantly bigger but this was this was huge and you could see, it was big enough and close enough, you could see it was a sphere, you know. When you okay, see cool. Venus, you can't, it's it's a light. It's, mm-hmm. it's, you can't tell it's a sphere. And it was, you could tell it was in our atmosphere. The fact that it was reflective was also interesting because not all of it was reflective, just part of it, like a sphere would be. I mean, the whole thing is probably reflective, but the way that it was capturing light is what I mean to say. So for the next 30 minutes, you'd see people stop and stare for a while. But after a few minutes, they all just resumed drinking and acted like they just never saw something. <laughs> like they didn't care. 
Me, on the other hand, with the influence of alcohol on my side, you were decided that this warranted <laughs> a little bit of concern. You were probably really riled up. I just I know you. Up. I and was I- riled up. I was just like, oh my God, something crazy is happening. Now, don't take riled up as like angry. I don't get no, angry no, when I drink. I mean, like, really but don't. I get excited. Yeah. And so I was excited. I was encourageable. Well, it's not like you could, you didn't want to punch it. You just wanted to like explore it. But I'm not the only one who was alarmed because people called the police and news stations all over the city. Now, I'm not just talking to people who were at the event because it didn't seem like anyone was that concerned. But that night or when this was happening, police were getting shit tons of calls and the news stations were getting shit tons of calls about this thing in the sky. So people saw it and people were alarmed. I at least can defend myself and say I was drinking. (laughs) I even pointed out to George, who was equally confused about what it was, but like the others, he had no cause for alarm. But he was equally like, I'm over it. Yeah, he didn't care. He was like, let's go get another beer. (laughs) Right. So I couldn't call Lily, obviously. She was at work, so I didn't know what to do. And I was drunk, and I knew I was drunk, and I felt like I needed to talk to a rational mind. Sure. So that's when I called Lisa. Of course. (laughs) The other you. (laughs) This is just like going to go bad. So she's like both lo- exactly like me and a complete opposite. We have so many similar personality traits, but she's like a tall, thin woman and I'm a short, fat guy. So like <laughs> visually we're very different. You guys but- would be the worst roommates. <laughs> <laughs> we'd, yeah, we'd kill each other, I guess. Now, I won't be able to recall the specific nature of our phone call because of the booze, of course. Sure. But I'm sure she remembers it like the back of her hand. And I'm pretty sure I come off really stupid in her re- <laughs> recollection of it. But the- I definitely enjoyed her version of the story a lot better Probably. when she told me about it. Like, I heard this years after you told me what you said. <laughs> and then when I heard her version, I was like, that sounds actually more fun. <laughs> One thing I can tell you is I do remember her laughing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure she was laughing at that I was drunk or what I was freaking out about or both, but there was laughter. Sure. But the gist of it, like, towards the end of the conversation is she pretty much told me, it's probably a weather balloon chase. Calm the fuck down. <laughs> You're really excited. So that was the phone call. Right. Well, anyway, after after the fest was ending um, and our designated driver, shout out to Vivi. Uh, came, My sister. <laughs> she came and picked us up and brought us home. God damn it. I don't know if she was even 21. She was either 20 or 21, but uh, you know, she wasn't drinking. Was I don't think she would have been 21. Yeah, she came and picked us up and dropped yeah. us off at uh, at my place. Well, I guess it was our place at the time. Um, but I decided I wasn't over with this. And the thing is, you could still see it in the sky. Oh, I know you. You are not going to let this go. And at this point, the sun had, had was mostly set. So the sky, instead of being a bright blue sky in the middle of the afternoon where you could see this whole thing, it was now nighttime. Mm-hmm. And you could still see it in the sky. But at this point, it did appear to have moved in the sky slowly, but it's, it was in a slightly different part of the sky, and it looked like it was smaller, and it now, instead of looking silvery, looked very golden, and the intensity from what little light, oh, it, was, cool. what little light it was capturing from the sunset was super bright. I mean, it hurt to look at. Like, I almost felt like it was dangerous to look at because, you know, it was probably reflecting so much sure. light. That didn't stop me, though. Well, no, because you're drunk. Yeah, I'm being, yeah exactly. <laughs> Nothing's going to stop you. So at this point, I think it was even that year, my parents, uh, they bought me stargazing binoculars, which are like super long telescopic binoculars mm-hmm. that have a tripod mount. So I went and I pulled it out and I set up my tripod in the front yard and with the, the binoculars on it. And because this object was moving so slow, I was able to hone in on it, focus on it, and get a super super clear look at it despite my inebriation i was able to get the binoculars perfectly set and i just looked in there and i stared at it and i could make out details that these binoculars gave me so much i could see everything about it so what did you see well after taking a few seconds of looking at it that's when i knew it was a weather balloon (laughs) damn it (laughs) it was so obviously a weather balloon in the binoculars I'm not joking when I say this, but I think when I got off work, I heard the story finally, from your perspective, of course. But I also saw multiple missed calls on my phone. (laughs) Because you were really, really determined (laughs) to talk to me about this, despite the fact that I was at work. I just, I love that little detail, because I'm like, you're like, I gotta call Lily. I don't care if she's at work. 
this is happening. I love that. Now, I've never seen a UFO, and I don't actually even think I believe in UFOs, but this was a moment where my alcohol was totally making me like, wow, this this could be the moment. Yeah. It wasn't. It so wasn't. <laughs> it was not your moment. Now, let's be honest. If it had been a UFO, it would have been the perfect time for it because I was drunk. And most times when people report UFOs, they're either like drunk or it's a blurry photo or they're completely unreliable witnesses. And I was totally at that moment an unreliable witness. An unreliable person. However, I don't know because sometimes those drunk people are like the loudest when they see something crazy and not as dismissive in the times that it is weird. I I like because they're they're holding on to it. Mm. Just like your girl... What was it? There was like a few episodes ago. I think it was in Hawaii. Oh, yeah, when she called up because of the blue light. Yeah, the blue light. And it and we still don't know how what it was. And the entire story to that is still in my head. I I don't know what it is. I love it. Anyway. We'll look more into that one later and see if there's more story to talk more about. More updates. They're like, it was a weather balloon. <laughs> but it was, it was, I didn't know at the time because I had been drinking. But apparently on the news that night, you can see transfers. It was, it was on the news. It was mentioned. Yeah. Uh, they talked about how it was a weather balloon and there was information given. Now, someone also took a good photograph of it on that exact day and submitted it to the Smithsonian. So I've been able to see it online and we'll probably post that photo on some of our social media. I don't want to put it on our Instagram because I, I don't want it to be obvious before the story. Oh, sure. Um, but you can tell in the photo it is a weather balloon, but at the same time, it does look rather cool. It's it's a pretty amazing picture that the guy took. So the, the information about it, to, be, to go down to facts instead of just what I thought it was at the time, uh, it was a weather balloon that was launched from Fort Sumner, which is 161 miles southeast of Albuquerque. Mm. If you don't know, weather balloons can be huge. You know, for instance, the smaller ones yeah. can expand to being 20 feet in diameter, which is big, but they can get way larger than that. I can't find specific information on this particular balloon, but it was definitely far larger. It appeared to be easily as large as most of the hot air balloons that we launch at the Fiesta every year, but probably even bigger. Because as it goes higher in the atmosphere, it expands further and further and further. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes, once they get super high, then they just explode. They, they get so... Yeah. And, and they've transmitted all their data by that point, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and considering that this was launched 161 miles away... And it was super high in the atmosphere. <laughs> you could tell this thing was absolutely massive when I was able to see it. I mean, it was really high up, but we were still able to see it with our naked eye. And the the one, the other picture, it is made out of material that as it expands, it gets kind of translucent, but it's also maintains some reflective property. So it looks bizarre. It doesn't mm. look like a cloud, but it also doesn't look like, you know, a helicopter or an airplane or something. It looks different. It's yeah. definitely nothing else looks like this in the sky. So it does have a weirdness to it. And I can see how people who've never seen this stuff before, like, let's be honest, let's talk about like Roswell for just half a second that maybe if they saw something weird, it would look bizarre because it's a material most of these people won't have seen before and it's going to look strange in the sky. And they're... I mean, we're just talking about something that would have happened a lot earlier in time and we're talking about with you yeah, now, today. Yes, where I was, we should, and just I was drinking. <laughs> oh my God. The amount of things I thought I've heard or seen while I was drinking, it could be an entire show on its own. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the moral of this story... Which is not anything to do with swimming in rivers. Sure. <laughs> the moral of this story <laughs> is don't listen to anyone who saw a UFO when they were drunk. When they're drinking, yeah. maybe. That's what I was saying. Uh, I was a completely unreliable witness, and I was convinced until I actually pulled out my binoculars. So. Yeah. And everyone else was just like, oh, yeah, totally weather balloon, and they just went about their day. So just My saying. favorite is that you were just so convinced. I love that so much. Because well, you're so not like that. I'd never seen a weather balloon to that yeah. point. And uh, I just figured a weather balloon was going to look very different than that. Yeah. And it it completely did it. That's what it looked like. So anyway, that is the end of episode Encounter. Encounter, Encounter, Encounter. I loved it. I never get tired of hearing that story just because I... And I look like an idiot in it. <laughs> No, it's just because like it was the one time you believed it, and I had you had to get so drunk for you to even think Believe this would have UFO existed. Right, exactly. And so, I mean, however or whichever way you got there, at some point in your life, you can say, "I believed in UFOs." And if any of you guys, well, for those of you out there who have drunk with me, uh, you guys know how excited I get when 
if I'm drinking and something excites me, something interesting, mm-hmm. like I I go like all out. I go ham on it. And yeah. so this was totally that example. And I was also still like, that was eight and a half years ago. I was still in my like mid twenties. So I still had all kinds of energy too. So the idea of like seeing something <laughs> like that, I was like, oh, I got to do this. Whereas now most of me would be like, it's probably not it. I'll Google it later. And Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm sure it's fine. And you know, if it does turn off to be a UFO, I'm drunk anyway. Who cares? What's up, guys? I can tell people I saw it. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> so that's what I got. I loved it. Thank you for finally sharing your story to the public. Want to get something? <laughs> I've got I've got other personal stories, none about UFOs though. Most of my other personal stories are supernatural. I actually want you to start telling your personal stories. I don't actually have any. I I think that's why I love supernatural so much because I don't really have any of my own. So yeah, I'll get to one. I've I've one good one. Well, I guess this one is kind of UFO y. Yeah, I got I, okay. So I got well, maybe that's what I'll do next time. I'll tell you my other UFO story. Yeah. Um, that one actually I don't like talking about because it, it actually scares me. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> what? So yeah, I, I I think I've told it to you once. I think you might have, but I, I don't know. And I didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> so interesting. I probably like got you drunk enough for you to finally tell me. So interesting. One, you got drunk and thought you saw one, and one took me to get you drunk to tell me well this one happened the one i'm gonna tell i wasn't drunk and no I no was i know I, I i think i remember it but because then that meant i was drunk too so i don't even remember it that well mm-hmm. so i'm very excited to hear it again sweet so something to look forward in future episodes guys yeah that might come up every hopefully soon i'm not sure but you know but anyway that i think that ends it this might be one of our shortest episodes and hopefully not in a bad way. In a bad way, or like, you know, we, we always hope to keep them under an hour. That was always our goal. But it rarely happens. But it does not happen, And actually, actually, if you guys have an opinion on whether or not you want our episodes to be like around an hour, or if you want them to be like closer to two hours or whatever, please let us know. Uh, let us know through Instagram or any of other social media, or even just text us for those of you that know us. We do actually kind of want uh, feedback on if you guys are looking for shorter or longer episodes, or if there's other stuff that you guys need. Yeah, I agree. So I really appreciate you guys listening to us, wherever you guys are from. And if this is the first time you've heard of La Llorona, I'm so excited that I got to tell someone and hopefully maybe freak them out a little bit the way I was when I was a kid. And if not, if it's like not the first time, that's okay. It's a pretty good story anyway. And full disclosure, there was a movie that came out within the last, I want to say, year or two. Uh, oh, yeah. We, that's neither right. of us have seen it, so we can't vouch whether or not it's a good representation or if it's even scary. So we don't know. We do need to see it at some point. So I we think we should so, just but... watch it. I don't, I think we are, you and I are always waiting for things to be free, but. Um, maybe this one will bite the bullet, especially since we just did an episode on it. It'd be Let's just fun. rent it. Yeah. Yeah. So we haven't seen it, so we're not neither endorsing or anything like that. We would always recommend the best way is to read about it. Uh, that's what we say about all horror stories. Yeah, for sure. There's just more information, and I don't know, just just good stuff out there. Totally. Um, yeah. But thank you for listening, everyone. And so both of the stories today were actually recommendations. So if you have any recommendations, things you want us to talk about, things to cover, you should absolutely let us know. Uh, you can contact, sure. us, contact us at uh, hotwpodcast at gmail.com. Definitely. I'm checking it all the time. And also uh, be sure to know that if this is your first time listening, we are available on a lot of different podcast platforms. So you can find something that hopefully works for you. Yeah. And you guys just want to talk to us more on social media. Let us know. We're awesome. here. <laughs> Well, and uh, even though it's the end of the episode, I know we're going to continue drinking, and we hope if you are as well. And if you guys happen to be drinking with us, we'll continue because our night is not over. In spirit, we will be drinking our spirits. (laughs) And if you are listening to this hungover, don't worry, because the best cure for a hangover is fear. See ya. Bye.